I am here to present you the products that we have developed in eYantra around the drone platforms that we have, uh, keeping in learnings and education in mind. So there is a range of platforms that we developed. So the name that we have given to the platforms are is Swift. I'll start with the smallest one that we have. This is called Swift Pico. Uh, this weighs around hardly 70 grams with the battery. Flies for around 10 minutes. Now you'll ask, what is what can we do with this? My answer is everything. If you want, if you are a beginner, you can put open source firmware. This hardware accepts that it the open source firmware will run on this, and you can fly this manually. If you want to level up, you can build your own control systems based on external feedbacks. You can put a camera on board. Uh, the participants who have seen UIRC, we can use this at same platform in uh, to solve those applications. Put an overhead camera, put a marker, and you can build your own control system. If you want to level up, you can build your own control systems for the internal firmware to control the motors and finally, uh, you know, put custom algorithms. And this is what it can do. It cannot lift any payload. So if you put a camera, you also need a processor. So what we have done is this is the Swift Pro. Swift Pro comes with a Raspberry Pi Zero and also a camera. So you can uh, use this camera and the Raspberry Pi to process on board. Now what else, what else we have since this is a Raspberry Pi, you can run an entire Linux uh, board on this. You can have Ubuntu running, you can have Raspberry, Raspberry OS running and you can also uh, put ROS on this. So it comes with ROS, ROS2. You can fly with ROS1 and ROS2 both or else if you want to again control manually, it still has a manual control. So this again flies for around 10 to 12 minutes with a full charge. This weighs 170 grams, still comes under nano drone, which is under 250 grams. So you can get away with flying it indoors and it's like not that heavy. Even if it hits someone, hits itself, it usually doesn't break until it's a very insane crash. So Swift Pro, I have two versions here. So this one comes with a range finder, LiDAR, and also a small optical flow camera. So if you do not want to build control systems, you can use these two sensors to stabilize the drone by itself. And then what you can do is next is higher level programming. You can plan the path. You can say, okay, drone should go five meters ahead, two meters right, one meter left. On board, you can uh, plan your path and uh, yeah, build uh, path planning algorithms. So these two sensors, the rangefinder lidar and the optical flow also can be put in this. Now, if you want to again level up the game, if you want to process depth cameras, if you want to put uh, an, a, a bigger processor, Raspberry Pi Zero usually cannot process huge amounts of uh, data. If you want to do heavy processing and if you want to put better cameras, the Swift Pro Max. So this little is a little big, bigger drone. Here you can see in front is the Intel RealSense camera. It's a depth camera. It will give you depth, inform depth information. By this, you can identify objects. You can check the distance of the any uh, any object from the camera itself, and that opens a lot of uh, you know opportunities to uh, build path planning algorithms. Slam, and it comes with a bigger Raspberry Pi, which is Pi Five, the latest one, with eight GB RAM and uh, yeah processing power. So again, it's the same hardware in the um, in terms of flight controller. It's just a little bigger size, and you can put around more 50, 50 grams payload on this. Flight time is again around 12 minutes. So these have been tweaked to get a better, better flight time. And as I mentioned, since the Pico, you can add more things and you can do the same things. You can build your own control systems. You can build higher level programs to fly the drones. So once these are all indoor flyables, by the way. But if you want to fly them outdoor, Pro Max and the Pro both have GPS capabilities. So if you want to fly outside, you can get your GPS coordinates. You can use a GPS to lock the position of the drone, you can plan a path in outdoors, a mission, a waypoint navigation mission, and then you can load that path using open source tools. So these are the four indoor platforms that we have. We have two more platforms, which are a little bigger one, if you want to fly with payload outside. Thus, it's a small drone, the out, outdoor, which I call small drone, takes around one kg payload, flies for 20 minutes. And if you want to put more payload, there's a five kg version also, which flies for 30 minutes. So we will see the two drones uh, upstairs, and these are the four ones uh, here. Since it's indoors, I might not be able to do many things. I'll just show you the hovering and flying and then landing. So this is the Swift Pico that you are seeing. And right now I'm controlling it via remote controller. So the remote control that I'm using is doesn't matter because this one has uh, a radio called as open, uh, it's, it's ExpressLRS. 
and it's open source, so you can build your own reader control also, it can be a mobile app also. The best thing about this is, this is very cute, so if, even if you are, uh, you know, harsh with it, it, it crashes into someone or it crash, crashes into a wall, it might not damage anything or itself. So that's the best part and since it's very minimal, it costs very less. So this was the Pico, let's try to fly the, uh, the Swift one here. This one is making a little more sound because it's little heavier since it has a Raspberry Pi Zero and a camera also. It's a downward facing camera. It publishes the camera feed over ROS, over Wi-Fi. Since there is no positioning inside the uh, auditorium here, there is not that capability right now, but it does have a GPS. Since we, if we go outside, we can have the RTH. RTH for uh, people who don't know is return to home. So if you are, if you anything, in any case of emergencies, you put a uh, press a button and it autonomously comes back to the takeoff point. 1080p video stream and 5 megapixel for photos. Flight time is 12 minutes. Just a second, I'll just land it. The total propellers are uh, good on test benches, but in real life, they don't have that much, uh, they have efficiency, but they don't have lift. So the range, since right now I'm using a radio controller, the radio setup that we have has reached maximum of 80 kilometers line of sight. Yeah, you can put geofencing on this. The, the board that we have chosen here is compatible with all the open source platforms. This one can run most other open source firmwares. And since ArduCopter can be put inside, you can do all the features that, uh, same things that you want to do with uh, ArduCopter. Mobile app would be difficult because the range will be a little shorter because the transmitter from the mobile app will be uh, of less power. So I have not, roughly you can go still around a kilometer line of sight. That's a LoRa chip inside. It's a 2.4 gigahertz LoRa version right now in this uh, radio. Since this has an onboard processor and GPS, it can hover. It will, even if it loses the signal, it can still hover. And you can put custom fail safes if someone jams the radio and the radio signal is lost. It knows that it is lost and you can configure either a return to home or land at that spot or hover at that spot, whatever you want. And this one is a Pro Max that I'm going to show you that has the Intel RealSense depth camera on it as well as the Raspberry Pi 5. And as expected, it makes a little more noise because it's a little heavier also. That's a flying Raspberry Pi with a Intel RealSense camera. I might want to land. Since there's a Pi 5 on it, there's a Raspberry Pi camera as well as the Intel RealSense camera. If you want heavier, more heavier onboard processing, you can also put a Jetson, NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano on it, which can run machine learning algorithms on the drone itself. That can take the payload. So I think we are done with the indoor uh, in, in demonstration of the drones and the uh, Swift lineup. So after, I think uh, we might want to move up for the other two platforms that we have for outdoors. Thank you everyone to join. In auditorium that we saw was a so normal flight, hovering flight. Here you will see the acrobatic capabilities of this drone. We will see how fast it can fly, how high it can fly and what all it can do. So, 3, 2, 1, launch. So now it's hovering just like in the auditorium. Let's see how fast it can go. Now let's see if it can do some acrobatic moves. So I will ask my friend to put a hand, we will land it, remove that. So this one that you see right here is the small outdoor drone and this can take a payload of 1 kgs and fly for 20 minutes straight. People who are asking me is this autonomous? 
So you can see the drone has been logged in position and I have left the controller because of GPS this is possible and you can also plan missions to put waypoints and uh, perform a mission waypoint navigation. At extreme heights, the atmosphere is so thin that the air pushing downwards will not be able to lift itself. So that's a, we have to do a calculation how much weight is that and how much is the propeller's capacity. Usually it's very high. So this one is the biggest drone that we have assembled here and that can take a payload of 5 kgs, fly for 30 minutes. Just as the previous drone, this has much better GPS, which is called a RTK GPS and it can hold its position much better than the previous one also. So I have left my, left my entire control and that's the drone flying itself. So let's see if the landing legs can be taken off from the view. Thank you everyone.